Welcome back, Jennifer here. Today we are cracking the code on treatment for reading comprehension. In my last two videos, I went over treatment techniques for fluent and non-fluent aphasia. So today I want to talk about how to help someone who has had a stroke regain some or even all of their ability to read. Now it's important to know that treating anyone that has difficulty reading after a stroke will involve extensive homework. So the patient really has to be willing to put in the effort to do what it's going to take to be able to read and understand written language again. Here are some of the most common problems people face when they have trouble reading. Number one, they are slower at recognizing letters and words. Number two, their processing speed is slower. Number three, they have a slower reading rate. Number four, they may misperceive letters and words. And number five, more complex sentences have to be read word by word. And so all of these issues will cause major difficulty with reading since only unskilled readers, like very young children or those learning a new language, rely on word by word reading. So let's talk about treatment. Just like in the other videos for treating aphasia, you have to start at the most basic level and work your way up if the deficit is severe. For reading, it begins with word recognition. So start with having your loved one read whole words. I usually use flashcards when I'm working on this, and if possible, you'll want to pair the words with its picture to help the brain recognize the word and understand its meaning. When just starting out, use words that are easy to sound out, like chair and dog. Those are gonna be much easier than words that you can't sound out, like yacht or island. So just keep that in mind. Now, as your loved one begins getting better at reading the words with its picture, then you can move them on to picture matching by putting five or six words on one side and pictures on the other and having them match. And then you can have show them a picture and give them a choice of two to three words to choose from. Um, so for example, if you show them a picture of a fish, then you lay out the words bird, fish, and train and have them pick the right word. Now, again, like with any other activity, you'll want to choose what I like to call survival reading words. That means finding words that your loved one will encounter every day, such as signs and labels, bills, addresses, even, even menus of your favorite restaurants that you like. You might even make two word lists. I've done this before in therapy. So I've made one list that contains the most important words that, that they want to be able to read and the other list um, those are going to be words that they would hope to be able to read again, but they can do without those words. So if your loved one gets no further, but to be able to read these specific words from these lists, they're going to appreciate your help and thank you because they will be able to regain some sort of normalcy in their life. But to proceed further with reading comprehension skills, you must first understand your loved one's prior reading capacity, their reading rate, and their reading interests. For instance, if your loved one didn't like to read very much, or at all, and they would only occasionally flip through a newspaper or a magazine, the time and effort that you spend on reading is going to be very different than someone who was, say, a college professor that read books all the time and enjoyed reading for leisure. Also, know that people who were avid readers before their stroke are going to usually have an easier time regaining reading skills after their stroke since they were more practiced, so it makes sense. Okay, so moving on, the next thing to work on is word comprehension. People with aphasia have problems recognizing and assigning meaning to printed words, so these activities are going to be very important. It's one thing to be able to read the word tornado warning and a whole nother thing to know what it means. So, you can do this in a few different ways. First, have your loved one distinguish between words with similar structure. For example, uh, cabbage and cottage, or boot and boat. If you search Google for minimal pairs word lists, then you will have more than enough examples at your fingertips for this activity. Second, you can have your loved one supply the missing letters to finish partially spelled words. So when doing this, you want to remember that letters missing from the front or the end of words are generally easier to come up with than the letters missing in the middle of the words. So you can make the task harder this way. Or you could just leave out more letters altogether. Third, you can have them work on word association activities. 
For this, you can use the same picture cards that you used with the whole word reading, but instead of giving the word, this time you'll want to give them the definition and have them either choose the correct picture or do the matching task, whichever you want. So for instance, um, show them a picture of a spoon and a key and then show them eat with. So now they're having to attach meaning to the pictures. Now, after your loved one can read words and assign meaning to those words, then it's time to start moving on to sentences. So here are a few exercises to try for this. Sentence completion tasks. You'll remember this because you did these when you were helping your loved one understand speech. Only this time your loved one has to be the one reading and filling in the blanks. So caregivers, your job just got a little bit easier. Then you can try analogies. So analogies are all about comparison. Look them up. Google has plenty of them. So for example, brush is to teeth as comb is to, and the answer would be hair. The last thing you could try would be to rearrange scrambled sentences. So you wanna start with shorter sentences like birthday today my is, today is my birthday, and then you'll move on to longer ones like lunch go wood for two out you like. Would you like to go out for lunch? Again, the internet is going to be a huge help for finding examples and ideas. There are a ton of websites for unscrambling sentences out there. And from here, it's really up to your loved one to find longer and longer pieces of text and keep practicing. Oh, and when it comes to reading longer things, I want you to remember these few things. You wanna find things that are familiar. You wanna find passages that are about 200 words long so that you're able to develop a theme. And you wanna find information that is clearly stated, not things that are, are inferred, because those are going to be the easiest things. Now, caregivers, if this all sounds like too much work, because none of this is easy, I would again suggest the WALK workbook for aphasia that I've mentioned in previous videos. However, if you have access to a tablet or similar device, I would highly recommend an app called Tactus Therapy. I've used this app over and over again in my therapy sessions. And a little side note, it was created by a speech therapist like me. So obviously it's gonna be really, really good. But they have, uh, they have tons of categories specific to different areas of difficulty. So for reading, I think they have two. They have reading therapy and advanced reading therapy. But they also have a language four in one that targets speaking, listening, reading, and writing if your loved one needs help in more than one area. Like I said in the beginning, reading requires a lot of practice and oftentimes a hands-off approach from you as a caregiver for them to regain their ability to read. So these apps can be a huge, huge help to them. Um, I'll attach a link below to the Tactus Therapy so you can see what's available from a computer, but you can also just download the app um, straight from your tablet and go from there. Okay, everyone. Well, that's it for today. I hope you learned something great. Comment below and let me know how things are going at home if you are caring for a loved one with aphasia. As always, thanks for watching. Try out this week's cryptogram puzzle. And until next time, good luck cracking the code.